Okay, take your Bible if you would. Everybody's curious about my artwork up here, if you want to call it artwork. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament. And divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielded fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed him, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts and earth after his kind and it was so and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and God saw that it was good and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the seas and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them and God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the seas, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Turn with me, if you would, to Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. 
for the former things are passed away. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that You would open blinded eyes and dull ears and hearts that are hardened. I pray that You would soften and open and touch and heal. Father, that You would have Your way and You would be glorified. In Jesus' name, Amen. Every week, I wrestle with what to preach. Every week, I have file drawers full of sermon notes, and I sometimes glance through them and think, all of these sermons, all of these messages, did they do any good? Did they really do any good? Sometimes you feel like they didn't do any good. They haven't really accomplished what you had hoped they would accomplish. Do you think God ever felt that way? You know, there's one thing that Genesis 1 and Revelation 21 have in common. No pain. There should be no more pain. No pain. Now, if you read what's in between those two chapters, you find that there are two types of pain. Okay? There's necessary pain. Because of the fall. <clears throat> First by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all had sinned. Because of the fall, there's necessary pain. That is a part of necessary pain. That's a part of necessary pain. We are all, the Bible says, the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. After the fall, there's pain. Because of Adam's sin, also because of our ancestors' sin. Due to ancestors' sin, you might would live in a communist nation. You might live in a land where there's not godly government. Maybe there's ungodly government. Maybe you live in an area where through war there's a lot of hunger. Maybe there's corruption. But that's a part of living in this wicked world. There's sickness. Disease. Genetic breakdowns. There's legitimate accidents. There's persecution. There's aging. And death. It's a necessary part of this existence that we now have because we live after the fall. Because of the fall, there's a certain amount of pain that goes with life. It's inescapable. And until he wipes away all tears from their eyes, until the Lord... Uh, decides to bring a new heaven and a new earth because we ruined the first one there will be pain okay that was a part of the curse that's a part of sin sin brings death sin brings pain sin brings sorrow all right so yes that's a necessary part but god in his mercy though we are living on a cursed planet on a cursed earth and there's pain and sorrow, God has given us direction how to live in this realm with the least amount of pain. Okay? How to avoid what I want to call
unnecessary pain. <clears throat> For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of a bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. There is necessary suffering because we live on a uh, in, in enemy territory. We live on a planet where there's sickness and death and pain and sorrow. Okay? So, God says, look, I'm going to give you the best way to navigate through this situation. It's called His law. It's called His word. God is not the author of the pain. God is not the author of the sorrow. God created a perfect world that was very good. And He's going to recreate another world that is very good. Okay? But He has given us, in His mercy, in His wisdom, in His patience, He's given us His Word to help us navigate through this life with the least amount of necessary pain. Okay? He's, he's helping us work through it. It's called love. Humble yourself, therefore, into the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You think that might be painful? Why is He telling us to be sober and be vigilant? To avoid that pain of being devoured by your adversary? Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Okay, here's the way it's supposed to work. Alright? God created a perfect world. Man blew it. We fell. We put ourselves in a situation where there is necessary pain because of sin. Sin brought death. Death and sin bring sorrow and pain. Okay? But, God designed through His Word, through covenants with man. He designed family groups to help each other through the pain. All right? He designed the church. He designed the home. And the church and the homes, when they do things God's way, they help each other through the painful times. There's necessary pain, but they are helping each other through guiding, holding one another, praying for one another, praying with one another, encouraging one another, comforting one another, and in following God's law, these people will make it through this life, all things equal, unless the persecution comes or whatever, but regardless of that, there will be less pain, and the pain will be productive pain. It will work for us a far more exceeding weight of glory. All right? But, then there's the other category. Unnecessary pain. Unnecessary pain. Pain that we don't need, that it's really not a necessary part of my existence. It's pain that I bring upon myself that I didn't have to bring upon myself. It's pain that I put myself into that I didn't have to put myself into. Because when 
I mean, look at this scenario. Families, mom, dad, kids, going to church, everybody obeying God, everybody loving God. We just had the Sunday school lesson about the 12, the, the 12 spies. There was 40 years of unnecessary pain. If they had obeyed God, those 40 years would have been spent conquering the land, preparing their vineyards and the gardens, and building their houses, and having a good time doing things God's way. This, the fact that they were a fallen race, did not necessitate the 40 years. They chose that. They, ch they said, we don't have enough pain because of Adam's fall. Let's go ahead and bring ourselves, uh, let's pile some more pain upon ourselves. Let's, let's put some more sorrow in our path. We didn't get enough from Adam. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, who would do that? People do it all the time. Sin, like pride, like jealousy, like envy, lust, self-gratification. I'm going to name quite a few. You think of the pain. You think of a beautiful, happy home, happy church, everybody working together. Yeah, there's sickness. Yeah, there's death. Yeah, there's aging. There's things we got to deal with. We work together. We pray with one another. We hold one another up. We encourage one another. We worship together. We say, hey, heaven's coming. Hey, this necessary suffering, even if it's persecution, is going to reap great rewards. We can get through that kind of pain. Mm -hmm. God's given us His Word, His law, so that we can navigate through that pain and it can be productive. It can be precious. It can reap great rewards. But when we get too smart, we end up piling on ourselves a lot of unnecessary pain. Unnecessary sorrow. Unnecessary death. Immorality, theft, greed, the abuse of privilege, lying, cheating, breaking rules, unkind words, selfishness, ingratitude, disrespect, self-pity, foolishness, laziness, neglect of duty, murmuring, backbiting, disobedience, irreverence. Sounds kind of like Romans 1, doesn't it? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Even as they did not like to retain the one who made things perfect, the one who gave them his law to navigate through the pain without with the least damage, the one who's promising a pain-free existence in the future if you obey, Okay? They didn't want to retain him in their knowledge. They wanted more pain. They wanted more sorrow. They wanted more suffering. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not appropriate. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding. That's an understatement of all understatements. Covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Pain mongers, sorrow mongers, Death mongers. Someone once said about, you gotta be careful uh, raising sheep. They're just looking for a place to die. Well, you know, obviously that's not the truth, but that would be more fitting for people. Looking for a place to bring more death upon myself. Looking for a way to bring more pain into my life. Just looking for a way to bring more sorrow into my life. Sin brings death. Sin brings sorrow. Sin brings pain. Don't we have enough from Adam? Don't we have enough just because of our forefathers? 
Why on earth would we want to bring more of that into our life? Why would we want to fill our families with more pain? Why would we want to fill our church with pain? Why would we want to fill our homes with sorrow? Why would I want to go out and get drunk and drive? I just got tired of feeling good. Tired of be, I'm just tired of being smart. I'm just tired of, of you know, being prosperous. And yet these people think they're smart. And they, they actually base their decisions on the fact that they think they're smarter than those who do things God's way. They really think that they are smarter than those who are bound to obey the Bible. Bible bound. Under God's law. Well, that's a terrible thing. Who would be under, want to be under God's law? Well, that's what you're going to be under if you ever make it to the new heaven, the new earth, where there's no pain. You're going to be under God's law. Right. Sin leads to broken friendships. Broken homes. Broken church fellowships. Broken marriages. And it is all 100% unnecessary pain. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe that sin, the wages of sin, is death? Mm -hmm. You believe that? Yes. That's all you got to believe. That's right. That's all you have to believe. The wages of sin is death. That means the paycheck is going to be death. When you sin, you're going to get paid. The wages of sin is going to be death. If you can just believe that, then you'll stay in God's realm with the necessary pain from Adam's sin, the necessary pain maybe from the society's sin, but no added pain, no added pain from your sin. Seems like a smart way to go, doesn't it? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Well, why wouldn't God just let all those people into His new kingdom? He saw what they did to the last one. Mm -hmm. He's from between Genesis 1 and Revelation 21. He saw it. Okay, this is what you did. So you can't come in my kingdom. I don't want any more of that. And anybody with a brain doesn't want you more of that. Right? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5.19 Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Because... God said in that new kingdom, He's going to wipe away all tears from their eyes. There'll be no more sorrow and no more pain. So you can't come. Makes sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All those things are unnecessary pain. Those things do not, do not have to be in your life. They don't have to be there. Adam's pain is enough. And if we are wise, and we follow God's plan, and we stay in the Word, and we follow His program, we come to church, we pray, we keep our hearts right like Caleb did, like Joshua did, holy follow the Lord, then we will suffer, we will get sick, and we will die, but it will be the necessary pain from Adam, and we will not have heaped upon ourselves any of this. You say, Brother Mark, this is so basic. Isn't that amazing how basic it is? Shouldn't even have to preach on it. Everybody already knows it. Mm -hmm. You knew this before I told you. You 
said, Brother Mark, basically that's every sermon you've ever preached. It's always the same stuff. Obey God. That's right. See, someone once asked the preacher, he kept preaching on you must be born again. They said, why do you keep preaching on you must be born again? He said, because you must. I would, I'd like to be up here, wouldn't you? But I'm not there. I'm here. But God says, okay, this is where you are. Let's make the best of it. Let's do the smart thing. Here's your, here's a path. Here's a program. Here's a plan. And this plan will not only help you navigate through this smart life, it will take you to a new heaven and a new earth. Well, you'll be back in this realm where there's no pain. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that wonderful? What a merciful God we have. What a glorious Father we have. That He saw we blew the first one, but He gave us this nice path and said, follow the path. Just follow the path. Okay? And it will give you a life. Yeah, there'll be, there may be persecution. There's going to be sickness. It, there's a lot of pain. The whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain. But you will not have unnecessary pain. You will not have unproductive pain. But the pain on this path is very productive and will reap a great reward. Well, all of us are willing to have a little pain for that, right? I mean, if I know that through some pain, I'm going to have a great reward. Every time you go out to work, you have pain through the week. You, you suffer, you work, you labor, you bust your knuckle, you cut your hand, whatever, but you get the paycheck. Productive pain is, is okay. I mean, these mamas are about to have some babies. There's going to be some pain, but when that little baby's born, the Bible says she forgets the travail for joy that a baby's born. All the pain is forgotten because here's a new fresh baby. So the Lord says that He's willing to work all things together for our good. I didn't eat the apple. <laughs> one time we asked our little ones, why did God kick Adam and Eve out of the garden? And one of them said, they ate the wrong apple. Yeah. I didn't eat it. I'm living in the suffering and pain of it. <clears throat> but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, <clears throat> faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, and in such this does not generate pain. It does not generate Death. It does not generate sorrow. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. All that that brings unnecessary pain, we've put it away. It says if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Ephesians 4.11 And he gave some apostles and some prophets and, pa and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive and cause pain. Their way is a painful way. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head in Christ for from whom the whole body fitly joined together. See? Happy fellowship. Fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto itself, unto the edifying of itself in love. Maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. I'm sure God really gets tired of trying to help us avoid pain. 
and watching people just run to it. Just run to it. Lap it up. Just like like it's good. Like they enjoy it. Like, like sorrow is something to be valued. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Oh yeah, I know that verse. You got it memorized, right? So, if I love you, and you love me according to God's commandments, then we keep God's commandments. Then we are one big happy family. Mom loves dad. Dad loves mom. Children love the parents. Parents love the children. There's respect and honor and obedience and kindness and help, helping one another, loving one another, everybody doing their duty. Little Johnny does his school like he's told. Little Susie cleans up her room and makes her bed. Everybody does what they're supposed to do and has a sweet spirit. And uh, mother obeys and honors daddy. And daddy works hard and provides for the family and leads them in the Bible time and leads them in the way of righteousness. And they all work together and they come to church and the church leads them in the paths of righteousness for his namesake and talks about uh, the, the glories of eternal reward in heaven. And as they grow old together, the grandchildren come up. And this community in Christ, because they're obeying His Word and doing what He said, <coughs> are building on a rock. And unnecessary pain <coughs> is at a minimum. Minimum. Almost not even there. The necessary pain is there. But the necessary pain is buffered by the family, the church, love one another, praying for one another, helping one another. The necessary pain is doable. It's actually building rewards. It's working together for our good. This doesn't. That's just suffering in vain. That's just suffering hoping that you learned it this time. <clears throat> Turn to Ezekiel chapter 18. Verse 21. <clears throat> But if the wicked will turn from all his sins as he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. And his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? But when the righteous turns away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considereth, and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. It's not fair. Oh, it's not fair. O oh, house of Israel, are not my ways fair? Are not your ways unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. 
Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Huh, it seemed like the Lord preached that sermon too, didn't he? I'm thinking of a, a December 23rd. I was three years old. I have very clear memories as a three-year-old of my grandmother walking through our front door on 5704 Euclid Northeast crying like I'd never seen anybody cry in my life. My aunt was helping her walk. My mom quickly went to her and they all three went in the bathroom. I was three years old. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't realize that a drunk driver had run through a stop sign and hit my two uncles, 18 years old, they were twins, hit their little VW uh, bug. My one uncle, Dennis, was thrown out and killed. The other uncle just broke his arm, it was beat, banged up. We all got to die. It's appointed in men once to die. But that was unnecessary pain. That didn't have to be. Totally unnecessary. I'm thinking of a, a man that I did a riff for. It's only been a year or so ago. Their family's name was in the paper. The young man was valedictorian of his class. I guess he went off to college. I don't know what happened. But he took his own life. Every time I see that man, I think about that. The pain in that family that they will never get over. Every parent I have ever known works to keep their child from getting hurt. They try to keep them out of pain and away from sorrow and away from death. They labor to teach them and guide them so that they don't have unnecessary pain. There's things in life that it come up, they get sick, they get a tooth pulled, they go to the dead. All these, you know, there's necessary things in life that they got to go through. But the parents want to keep them from unnecessary pain. So they, they discipline them. Oh, that's, that's a necessary pain. It doesn't, I mean, it, it may be unnecessary if you just listen, but the fact is it's trying to keep you from a much bigger load of pain. Trying to teach principles. Protecting you from an incredible amount more of pain than that switch and correction gave you. I know a young lady who went to Bible college. Married a young man who's going to be an evangelist. Oh, they got started. Times were a little tough. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. You know the story there. Well, this fella had a friend, just like Amnon's. He ended up being unfaithful to his wife. He wrecked the marriage, caused pain, 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 pain for years. Totally unnecessary pain. They could, be, they could be a happy family today. But that pain has transferred generations. It's going to be generational. Multi-generational dysfunction and pain. Totally unnecessary. Didn't have to be. You know, I mentioned to you that I heard, I heard uh, 
somebody complaining or telling of, tell me of someone complaining about being a preacher's kid. There wasn't anybody in this room. Didn't want to be a preacher's kid. Didn't like being a preacher's kid. You know, it, it may not be easy. I wasn't a preacher's kid. But I think it would be really good if that individual could be reincarnated as the drunkard's kid. Or the dope addict's kid. Or maybe he could be raised in the home that my father was raised in. Ingratitude. Pride. Laziness. Trespass of God's law in any way, shape, or form. Trespassing God. God said there's a path. This is the way of walking in it. The way of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. The way of duty. The way of character. The way of obedience. The way of respect. The way of kindness. The way of unselfishness. <coughs> he says, this is the way. Not only is it going to lead you through this necessary pain, it's going to lead you through this to no pain in a new heaven, in a new earth. Seems like a smart thing to do. Why do human beings insist on piling this up in their own life continually where's the wisdom in that I don't understand do you know just like the parents are working to keep their children from pain do you know what the work of the church is do you know what I'm doing this morning do you know what I do every week at this time unless brother Jesse's trying he's doing it too Unless somebody else is up here doing it. We're trying to convince you to go the way of least pain. Oh, that preacher's up there. He's screaming at us over the pulpit. You know the people who say that? I've watched their life. It's like wreckage, wreckage, wreckage. And I wonder why, why did I even bother yelling at him over the pulpit? They wanted pain so bad that they break the door down to get out of here so they could go get some pain. I don't understand it. I'm thinking of a number of families who sat under my ministry over the last 30 years. <clears throat> there was one family. I think they had about eight children. I have to sit back and count them all. Sweet children. Precious children. That path of least pain just wasn't good enough. So they had to wreck their home. Children went to the devil. I've got story after story after story in my mind. Family after family, individual after individual, young person after young person, marriage after marriage. And all those sermons in those file drawers, folders and folders of sermon notes. I was trying to convince them that there's a way. <coughs> there's a way where there's a lot less pain. The necessary pain on this path is productive. The necessary pain on this path reaps rewards. The other path is full of unnecessary pain. Don't go that way. Oh, that preacher don't know anything. Who does he think he is? That control freak. He's just always yelling at us. Thinks everybody's supposed to do it his way. It's my way or the highway. I'm going to go do what I want to do. Down the path of unnecessary pain. And not only is it a path of unnecessary pain. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof 
are the ways of death. Not only does it bring unnecessary pain, but you're going to face God for the trespass, and you're going to go to hell and pay for that trespass. Oh, Brother Mark, what if you just don't believe all this? Then I can't help you a bit. I'll be watching, though. I can't help you. I can't do anything for you. You don't want to take the medicine. You don't want to believe the protocol. You don't, want, you don't like the prescription. Then you just go do that which seemeth right unto a man. But I'll be watching. I'll be watching. And I believe it was Jeremiah who said, But if you will not hear, my soul shall weep in secret places. But if you will not hear, young person, your parents will look on with broken hearts. If you will not hear, church member, your pastor will look on and say, what good was all the preaching? All the sermons they sat under. Those of you who are here Tuesday, we listened to the sermon. We heard the testimonies in the background. Did it do any good? I spend time in prayer wanting to get what God wants for His people. Oftentimes, it's like, well, I don't, I don't have anything to say that I haven't said 20 times. Should I say it again? God says, say it again this way. Okay. I'll say it again. We'll put a diff we'll take this same message. We'll put it, we'll dress it up a little different. A little different drawing. A little different text. We'll go at it from a little different angle. And we'll say it again. And then wonder, Lord, did it do any good? Will it make any difference? Or as soon as we're dismissed, is it back out to gathering up some more pain? The problem is this. Unnecessary pain mongers bring pain into happy scenarios <clears throat> that otherwise would be free of such. You know, the blood of Jesus can cleanse from all sin. If you have caused unnecessary pain, if you've learned, Ezekiel 18, if you've learned, if you get it now, if you understand, then get on that path. Get on that path. Oh yeah, there's going to be some necessary pain. But this pain is productive. Get on that path. God's boundaries. God's law. God's way. God's wisdom. Get in the Word. It's not going to save you from the necessary pain, but it'll save you from the unnecessary pain. Lots of it. I've lived... Soon to be 52 years. I've experienced plenty of this. And yet I have followed the Lord since I was 15 years old, to the best of my understanding. Some of that was due to my stupidity. Okay, I'll own that. But the vast majority of it was due to try, trying to keep others from this. Trying to convince others that God's program is the smart way. God's way is the smart way. There's no need for all this. Let's avoid it. Now, 2018 is just about over. I wonder how much of this you've experienced in 2018. <coughs> 
2019 is coming. There may be some of this we don't know. The last two falls, I fell off a roof. Hopefully this fall I won't fall. <clears throat> but, you know, that's just, that wasn't due to sin or unrighteousness. That's part of life. It's called gravity. <laughs> but uh, that's part of life. It's called gravity in old age, I guess. I don't know, maybe there's a mixture of the two. But nonetheless, there may be some necessary pain in 2019. Okay? You may get sick. <coughs> you may get cancer. You may die. You may have an accident. A legit, not, not, hopefully not because you're drunk or they're drunk or you didn't, you didn't maintain your vehicle. You were not neglective in your maintenance and so forth. You, you did your duty. You did what you're supposed to do. You obeyed the law. But even then, there may be an accident. There's a lot of pain that can come in your life. It's unavoidable. God will help you through it. He will hold your hand. The church will be there with you. Your family will stand beside you. The family of God. If you're in God's program, we're going to be there praying with you. We're going to be there supporting you. We're going to be there helping you. We're going to cry with you. We're going to rejoice with you. If we're all on the path, we're going to make it through. And all this pain is going to be productive. But 2019, let's see if we can avoid this. It's so unnecessary. So unnecessary. It doesn't have to be. I don't want it. Do you want it? I don't want it. So let's avoid it. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. Any thoughts before we pray? You know, one of the ultimate stupidity things that people do after they go their own way and wreck their own life, they turn around and blame God. I know. We see in Revelation, they blasphemed God for all the plagues. It's like, yet they still wouldn't repent. And God, the one who didn't cause any of it, always gets the blame. Because, after all, if I want to be my own God, then He's the one in the way, right? What a fool. You couldn't create a grasshopper. And yet you want to be your own God. Maybe you ought to make your own planet. Maybe we ought to just obey the one that's there. The one who created this planet. Maybe we ought to realize that he's smarter than we are. We ought to, but it just comes back to a matter of unbelief. We have this we naturally have this suspicion of him that he's just out to ruin us. I think the problem is this is this is true. But if a message like this makes me go, okay, I'm going to set out on, the, on this uh, path of least pain. So you start setting out trying to avoid pain. Because the pastor said, if we do it this way, we're going to avoid pain. You're going to end up in the unnecessary pain category. Because God's way will bring pain. And the devil will always have a way of escape from that pain. That you think, I'll be able to escape this pain. But he doesn't tell you that he's trading your paycheck after every week do what he wants you to do has pain at the end of it. It's unnecessary. It's non-productive. Whatever. You don't you don't set down this course from a carnal perspective looking for the path of least pain. It is the path of least pain. It is the path of only having productive pain if you handle it appropriately. But that's only when you, you are willing to take the necessary pain because that necessary pain will come. And the thing is, when somebody else's unnecessary pain brings pain into my life, it's my necessary pain. It's, it wasn't, Adam's, that necessary pain is unnecessary. Adam didn't have to sit, right. but he did. So it's my necessary pain for me to follow God. 
So when somebody else departs from God and heaps all kinds of unnecessary pain on them and brings unnecessary pain into my life, it's now my necessary pain and I have to take it and deal with it that way. I can't try to avoid unnecessary pain thinking it's unnecessary. Uh, the only pain that's unnecessary for me is pain that I incur on me. Because when somebody else incurs it on me, for me to remain following God, for me to have, <laughs> I get that pain, that's my necessary pain. For you and, personally, right? Right, for me personally. Yeah, church-wide, church-wide, our uh, pain has to do with our conduct and our outreach and our persecution. Those are necessary things. But there's a lot of unnecessary pain that we as a body, or we as a family, or I as an individual, can avoid. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get themselves in heaps of unnecessary pain trying to escape the necessary. Right, because, because they think they're smarter than God's Word. God's Word said the way of transgressors is hard. And they'll say, well, I think the way of obedience is hard, so I'm going to go the way of transgressors. Like, okay, go prove God right. That's what you'll do. You'll go prove God right. Necessary pain makes me think of things like self-restraint, self-discipline, endurance, patience. Right. Also called long-suffering. But it's profitable. Right. I think almost any, any age of a uh, child in here can, can grasp the what was being taught this morning because, or most anyway, um, because they understand, you know, you don't get you don't get a spanking for doing what's right. You, they, they understand the concept of avoiding pain. And most of them w would have even some experiences varying greatly of when they did something, they knew they shouldn't have done, and they got eventually they got paid for it whether it's because that they eventually got the school graded or what happened, whatever happened and if we can if we can just carry that over into our life we've done we've done plenty of things in the past uh, that caused I mean, how many times do we have to repeat it that's right when can we learn our lesson and go okay i'm i'm now the pain i'm suffering from from some foolishness in the past now it's 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 unnecessary pain, but it's necessary for me just to bear it and not keep keeping it up for the future. And so many people, I think, just, they, they in a way, just give up because they start, they, they know they're reaping things that they did, and so they just, just, like, dive in. And instead of saying, stop, let's get out of this. Um, and also, uh, the difference between, a lot of times, the difference between necessary pain and uh, unnecessary pain is kind of like a credit card um, or a debit card or something. But a one a debit card it takes imme is immediate payment. So maybe I could re could ignore some pain or self restraint by indulging in this or uh, not standing up against this. But you're going to pay for it later with some interest incurred. And it's and one is. Can be productive if you maintain faithful and don't cave in then you that can be productive pain but it's pain you feel right at the moment and the other is just postponing the pain and then you'll feel it worse later you know if if i if i have done wrong and i know well i'm gonna reap i'm gonna reap some of this so why try like what well, you want more of that how much more of that do you want until you stop doing wrong and get back in line with the law, you're still heaping up wrath against the day of wrath. You're still heaping up unnecessary pain. So even if you've done it in the past, if you've made mistakes, you've done it in the past, I know, I'm going to have to reap, I'm suffering unnecessary pain. The only way to get things going the right direction is to get on the path and stop planting those seeds. Then you can reap something else. That's the only way. 2019. We've got a year ahead of us. Lord willing, if the trumpet doesn't sound, or I don't know who will be here next year. I may not be here next year. I almost wasn't here this year. Things can happen. Auto accidents. Things can happen. As a family, 
church, we ought to determine, number one, I'm going to do all I can to avoid unnecessary pain in the body of Christ. Mm. Number two, I'm going to do all I can to help my brothers through the necessary pains of life. That is God's plan. Mm -hmm. We want to be here for one another. Help each other through the pains. We may be persecuted. Those are pains we're going to have to help each other through. But let's determine in our hearts, by the grace of God, that whatever pain comes in 2019, none of it will be unnecessarily brought into my life and the church through me. There won't be any, there will be productive pain. And we'll face it together. And we'll pray through it. And we'll cry together. And we'll rejoice together. But we won't be dealing with unnecessary pain that just keeps us from being productive. Can we determine that this year? Let's pray.